Okay, today we are going to um, do the classical macroeconomic model, the simplest macroeconomic model. And this model uh, takes a classical approach to aggregate output. So capital and labor in the economy are fixed and are all being used efficiently. And so our level of GDP, our overall level of production, is equal to potential. Uh, no resources are wasted, there's no unemployment, there's no unused capital resources. So Y equals Y bar. Um, aggregate output Y is also equal to its components, C plus I plus G plus net exports, exports minus imports, and I'll probably just start using X for net exports uh, from now on. Uh, the only behavioral assumption we have in our models, uh, this model, is that consumption uh, is equal to an autonomous component, C bar, uh, and also equal to a component that depends on income and the interest rate. Uh, consumption depends on disposable income, Y minus T, and consumption depends on the interest rate. Higher interest rate means purchases of consumer durables in particular, like refrigerators, become more expensive, and so people defer consumption. So higher interest rate means less consumption. Uh, interest, uh, the, other, the interest rate also affects investment, so net uh, aggregate investment uh, is equal to uh, I bar, an autonomous component, something that responds to other factors, and a component that responds to the interest rate. So. Uh, businesses, when considering to make a major capital investment, if the cost of financing the capital investment is too high, uh, they might postpone it later. So investment uh, responds negatively to the interest rate. Now, should be, we should remember that disposable income, Y minus T, is also by definition equal to consumption plus savings. Whatever is not consumed from disposable income by definition is, is savings, as private savings. So with that uh, identity definition in mind, we get a little bit of algebra uh, and we can rework these two equations, the y equals c plus i plus c plus x, and y equals uh, c plus s. Now we brought the t over to the other side, so we have y equals c plus s plus t. So you notice both equations uh, have y on the left side, and they both have c on the right side. So if we set the two y's equal to each other, y here is equal to y here, the c's cancel out and we're left with i plus g plus x equals s plus t. A uh, little bit of rearranging, we have uh, s plus t minus g equals i plus x. So this is private savings and this is government savings. So this is savings by the, by the private sector, by consumers basically, uh, households, uh, and this is government savings. So total savings in the economy uh, is this whole term, and by definition, these are just definitions of our macroeconomic aggregates, by definition everything that's saved in the economy uh, is equal to whatever is invested or whatever is exported abroad. So we can think of the economy as producing a whole bunch of stuff, some of the stuff is not consumed, it's left over, it's saved, and that savings by definition is either we call it, we count it either as investment, so it might be inventories, which are part of investment, or it might be a factory, which is not consumed, uh, but both inventories and factories will be thought of as investments in the sense that they can produce goods in the future. So real, these are real investments, not financial investments. Uh, but we could also ship those goods and services that we don't consume uh, abroad, uh, and if we have a positive uh, trade surplus, that is net exports are positive, we're accumu accumulating claims against foreigners uh, and that's a kind of way that we can save in the in the world. So if we think about the way we can save in the real world, we either have goods and services that we put away for the future or that will make us more productive in the future, or we send goods and services to foreigners so that they uh, will provide us with goods and services in the future. That's what savings that's what savings is. So 
Uh, given this uh, this identity, uh, we crawl, re recalling that that savings is equal to uh, y minus t minus c. So savings depends on the interest rate because consumption there depends on the interest rate. Uh, that means we can uh, sort of rewrite this uh, and have uh, savings depending on the uh, on the interest rate. And uh, this should be a minus sign here, not a plus sign. Um, so uh, y is fixed, so since y in this equation is uh, fixed and y here is fixed, we have a relationship between the amount of savings that goes on in the economy and the interest rate. So we can graph that uh, where we have savings responding positive to the interest rate and investment responding negatively to the interest rate. Now, in terms of our, our exact equality, what we have is that s plus t minus g uh, has to be equal to i plus x. So we then can think of, well, what, what determines r? And there's actually three possibilities. So normally we want to say, oh, well, it must be where they cross, but not necessarily. There are three, three possibilities. If our economy is only a domestic economy and is closed to foreign trade and movements of capital, then that's true. The interest rate will be where the savings equals investment lines, uh, where the two lines cross, uh, and that, by definition, if we're a closed economy, net exports is equal to zero. But we also might be uh, what's called in macroeconomics a small country, uh, in which case we have free flows of capital. Our interest rate is equal to the rest of the world's economy interest rate, our star. Um, and we might alternatively have a large country assumption where uh, the interest rate in the global economy is determined by the interaction between our country, the large country, and the rest of the world. And trade has to balance in for the whole world, so our net exports has to be equal to the negative of the rest of the world's net exports. Uh, so trade has to balance whatever, if, if we have positive net exports, that means that they have net imports by, by definition. Um, so those are the three possibilities. We'll look at them graphically. Uh, if there's only uh, a domestic economy so that the trade balance by definition is equal to zero, then that, that x here uh, is, is equal to zero, right? We just, we're crossing that out. And so r is equal to the level, uh, the level where savings plus uh, taxes minus government spending is equal to investment. And, and, and we're done um, with the determination of the interest rate. So changes in autonomous consumption, changes which affect savings, changes in the tax rate, changes in government spending will shift the, uh, uh, the savings curve, for example, and, and lead to a new interest rate. This is pretty standard um, stuff. So if it's a domestic economy, the interest rate is determined by domestic savings, domestic uh, investment. If we have the small country assumption, let's say that our rest of the world has a high real interest rate. At that high real interest rate, uh, our demand for investment goods is low. Uh, so our demand for investment is, is this much. Uh, our amount of savings, though, at a high interest rate is here. Uh, and so the gap between those, marked in, marked in red here, is the trade surplus. So that's going to correspond to our, uh, our net exports. Uh, and we then respond to foreign interest rates uh, by ha exporting more or exporting less. And we can consider a variety of possibilities there. Finally, we have the large country case. In the large country case, we're now considering the United States and the rest of the world, uh, and the condition for equilibrium for the United States and the rest of the world is that the interest rate, which has to be the same interest rate in the United States and the rest of the world if there's free flow of capital, uh, the interest rate has to be such that our net exports uh, are equal to the negative of the rest of the world's net exports. And so we've drawn a little case here where that indeed would be the case. Our net exports, this amount, is equal to the negative of the net exports of the um, of the rest of the world. So that would be what determines the interest rate. Changes in our savings investment, changes in the rest of the world's savings and investment would cause changes in the interest rate.